Hello, my dear students. I hope you all are having a great time, and you all are utilizing this time in the best possible way for your upcoming JW mains and NEET exam. Students, if I talk about this champion series, here we have moved to lecture number twenty-four in chemistry. And if I talk about today's lecture, today we are going to discuss inorganic chemistry. and in inorganic chemistry we are going to do group chemistry group chemistry and in this group chemistry or block chemistry we are going to discuss d and f block elements relatively much more easier chapter much easier chapter easier chapter you won't have much reaction a very simple chapter simply you have need to remember all the properties students and the most important book for this particular chapter is your ncert textbook whether you are going to write jw mains jw mains or neat for both these exams this ncert textbook is really really important student whenever you are going to revise inorganic chemistry please be thorough with ncert textbook also apart from your module apart from dpp and all the things am i clear students students now it's time to start our discussion on d and f block element student even if i talk about this d and f block element this d block element is most important very few properties of f block elements are important so we'll discuss this f block elements at the end first we'll discuss all about d block element itself so student shall we start now let's start d block elements why it is called d block elements can you tell me student the reason is here the last electrons or the differentiating electrons enters into n minus 1 d sub cell last electrons or differentiating electron enters into n minus 1 d sub cell am i clear that's why they are referred as d block element if i talk about its position its placement in the periodic table basically they are at the center of the periodic table right on the left side we have s block right side we have p block and exactly at the middle we will have d block elements elements from which period it starts it starts from fourth period fourth period and up to seventh period if i talk about group basically d block element lies from group number 3 to group number 12 we'll discuss all these things am i clear students so basically exactly they are at the middle of the periodic table now these d block elements are also referred as transition elements d block elements block elements are also called called transition elements why because there is transition is prop in property as we move from left to right in a periodic table as we move from s block to p block as basically we move from electro positive to a highly electro negative element and in between we are having a metals and these metals are basically your d block element so there is transition in property that's why they are referred as transition elements am i clear student okay let's first of all talk about the general electronic configuration of d block elements they are having a general electronic configuration of n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns 0 to 2 this is really really important n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns 0 to 2 this is the general general electronic electronic 
configuration of d block elements now the next question is are all d block elements referred as transition element no only those d block elements are referred as transition elements which have incompletely filled n minus 1 d subcell only those d block elements are referred as transition elements transition elements which has incomplete incompletely filled or partially filled n minus 1 d subcell partially filled partially filled n minus 1 d subcell either in the ground state or in any oxidation state if any element has incomplete filled n minus 1 d subcell either in its ground state or in any other ionic state any other oxidation state if it is having a partially filled n minus 1 th d subcell then such d block elements are referred as transition elements okay let's talk about it can you tell me few transition elements okay student can you name few transition elements yes we can name it transition elements transition elements let's talk more about these things first of all elements incompletely filled n minus 1 d subcell like iron atomic number z equals to 26 configuration argon 3d 4s2 3d6 right we know that in the d subcell we are having five orbitals so a maximum of 10 electrons can be accommodated only six electron is filled here so is it partially filled or completely filled partially filled so iron will act as a transition element am i clear okay if i talk about non-transition elements non-transition elements transition elements all those d block elements all the d block elements which have completely filled n minus 1 at d subcell either in its ground state or in its any oxidation state such elements are referred as non transition elements can you name a few non transition elements can you give example yes zinc cadmium mercury these elements are referred as non transition elements basically they are placed in group 12 if i talk about the configuration of zinc it's having a configuration 3d10 4s2 if i talk about the configuration of cadmium it's having a configuration 4d10 5s2 and it's having a configuration 5d10 6s2 am i clear students the if i look at the configuration of zinc the n minus 1 s d subcell is completely filled am i clear even in its higher oxidation all state also basically zinc for zinc the most stable oxidation state is zn plus 2 now if i write the electronic configuration of this zn plus 2 it will have 3d10 so still zinc in its atomic state or even in its ionic state it's having a completely filled n minus 1 d subcell that's why zinc is a non-transition element cadmium is a non-transition element mercury non-transition element now sometimes we have confusion regarding copper this is really important copper atomic number z equals to 29 right student now if I talk about the general configuration, it's having a configuration argon 3d10 4s1. Now you will say, sir, n minus 1 at d subcell is completely filled. So this copper should be a non transition element. Okay. Mainly copper also exists in copper plus 2 oxidation state. 
mainly in the aqueous form copper plus 2 is more stable and now if i write the electronic configuration of copper plus 2 it will have a configuration 3d9 so copper also exists in copper plus 2 and if i write the configuration it's having a 3d9 configuration and now the n minus 1 d subcell is not completely filled so copper is also counted as a transition elements all those d block elements which have incompletely filled which have partially filled n minus 1 d subcell all such elements are referred as transition elements can i write one statement related to it all d block elements are transition elements true or false it's false. All D block elements are not transition elements. Exception is zinc, cadmium, mercury. These group 12 D block elements, they are non transition elements. All the transition elements are D block elements. True or false? True. All the transition elements are basically D block element itself. But all the D block elements are not transition elements. Am I clear, students? Now, students, on the basis of this electronic configuration, D block elements are divided in 4 series 3D series, 4D series, 5D series, and 6D series. Students, basically 3 series that is 3D series, 4D series, and 5D series. These 3 series are completely filled, whereas 6D series is incompletely filled. Let's discuss one by one about all these series. So, let's start our discussion on 3D series first of all. 3D series starts with atomic number 21, ends at atomic number 30. If I talk about the general configuration, it's having a general configuration. Argon 3D 1 to 10, 4S 1 to 2. Students, if I talk about the elements present in these 3D series, the elements are Scandium, then we will have titanium, then we will have vanadium, then we will have chromium, manganese, then we will have iron, cobalt, then we will have nickel, copper, and then at the end we will have zinc. Student, I have learnt a mnemonics for this, although this particular mnemonic is in Hindi, since I have learnt in Hindi only, I am going to use that mnemonic. If you understand little bit of Hindi, you can easily understand. Okay. SC Sachin TI Tendulka All Sachin fan can easily learn this mnemonics. World V all the world starts with W, but here I am going to use the term V. World TI Chromium Cricket Manganese MN May. May Fe iron fir Co cobalt koi Ni nickel naya Cu copper cup Zn zinc jitega Sachin Tendulkar world cricket may fir koi naya cup jitega Sachin scandium Tendulkar titanium world vanadium cricket chromium May manganese koi fir iron koi cobalt naya nickel cup copper jitega zinc. Am I clear, students? Now let's have a look at the electronic configuration of these elements. Candium atomic number 21. So it will have a configuration 4s2 3d1. First, the electron enters into 4s and then it enters into n minus 1 th d subcell, right? Then, titanium 4s2, 3d2, vanadium 4s2, 3d3. Now, chromium, this one is an exception. This one you have to remember. This chromium configuration, really, really important. Some of the configurations are really important. And I will st put star mark over these configuration. Now, chromium. It will have a configuration 4s1, 3d5. And why it's so? Because an element with a half filled subcell or completely filled subcell are more stable. Right? 
this one is having a more exchange energy more is the exchange energy more is the stability so chromium will have exception it will have a configuration 4s1 3d5 we won't we won't use d4 configuration in 3d series am i clear next one 4s2 3d5 then we'll have 4s2 3d6 for iron 4s2 3d7 for cobalt then we'll have nickel 3d8 4s2 now once again we have exception for copper in 3d series i am not going to use d4 and d9 configuration repeat d5 and d10 configuration so here i am going to use 4s1 3d10 configuration fulfill completely filled configuration more stable and then zinc 4s2 3d10 am i clear students i hope you are crystal clear with this 3d series right the important configurations the exceptional one for chromium and copper chromium 3d5 4s1 copper 3d10 4s1 right student now let's move to the next series and that is 4d series and if i talk about this 4d series elements 4d series elements it will have a general configuration 4d 1 to 10 5s 0 to 2 this one is really really important this particular series will have lot of exception in their electronic configuration so this series is really really important student first of all let's talk a bit more about this series starts with atomic number 239 why 39 just below this right so if i talk about this 3d series it was there in fourth period now this one is there in fifth period as we move from fourth period to fifth period there's a gap of 18 elements so atomic number will increase by a factor of 18 right scandium 21 so here i will have yttrium atomic number 39 so 4d series starts with atomic number 39 and ends at 48 student if i talk about the elements of the 4d series these elements are yttrium zirconium niobium molybdenum technetium then we'll have rhodanium rhodium then we'll have palladium silver and cadmium student here also i have learned one mnemonic and i'm going to use that one but still this mnemonic is also there in hindi only but not that difficult yari jara nibhana maut tak rukavte ra me pade agar koi yari yttrium jara zirconium nibhana niobium molybdenum moth technetium tak rudenium rukavte ra rhodium then we'll have pade palladium agar silver koi cadmium am i clear so this is the mnemonic for 4D series. Yari, Jara, Nibhana, Moth, Tak. Yttrium, Zirconium, Nibhana, Niobium, Moth stands for Molybdenum. Tak stands for Technetium. Rukavte, Rodanium, Rhodium. Rukavte, Rahme, Pade, Palladium, Agar, Silver, Ag, Koi, Cadmium. Am I clear? Student, now it's time to talk about the electronic configuration of these 4D series. Student, here we'll have lot of exceptions and basically in 4d series we won't have the configuration of d3 d6 and d9 these three configuration will not be there am i clear let's talk about it first yttrium normal one 5s2 4d1 zirconium 5s2 4d2 now niobium this one is important I have put one star mark over here. I'm not going to use D3. So I will directly write 4D4, 5S1. Right? Next, molybdenum. 5S1. Then we'll have 4D5. Then we'll have technetium. 5S2, 4D5. Am I clear, students? Next, I'm not going to use D6 configuration. D6 configuration, it's therefore rhodanium so directly i am going to use d7 configuration 4d7 5s1 am i clear next 
Am I clear, students? 4D8, 5S1. Now, for palladium, I will have a configuration 5S0, 4D10. This one is really, really important. Palladium, once again important. Then silver, 5S1, 4D10. Cadmium, 5S2, 4D10. So, palladium, silver and cadmium will have D10 configuration. This one is important. Palladium, silver, and cadmium will have D10 configuration. Ruthenium will have D7 configuration in spite of having D6 configuration. And then niobium will have D4 configuration. Am I clear, students? So I hope you learned this 4D series, the electronic configuration also. This electronic configuration is really, really important. How many exceptions we have learned so far? For chromium, copper, then niobium, then for rhodanium, then for palladium, then for silver, and cadmium is not an exception. It's 5s2, 4d10. This one is a non transition element. Here, this zinc is a non transition element. Completely filled N minus 1 D subcell. Now, let's move to the next series, and that is 5d series. And now let's start our discussion on this 5D series. If I talk about this 5D series, it starts with atomic number 57. Just after this element, we will have our 4F series, that is F block elements. F block elements will be filled first, and basically the electrons will enter into 4F subcell. And then we'll have once again our 5D series, and then students. Now let's start our discussion on this 5D series. Student, this 5D series starts with atomic number 57, and then it ends at atomic number 80. Starts with atomic number 57, which is therefore lanthanum, and ends at atomic number 80, which is therefore mercury. Now, you may say, Sir, are 24 elements present here? I will say no. Basically, student, just after this element lanthanum, LA, we will have our lanthanide series, where we will have our 4F series lanthanide series which will start with atomic number 58 and will end at 71 once again just after this 71 we will have our 5d series so once again this 5d series will start with z equals to 72 and then it will end at z equals to 80 Starting at lanthanum, Z equals to 57. Then we'll have our F block elements, that is lanthanide elements, will have which will be from atomic number 58 to 71. And after this, once again, we'll have our 5D series. Basically, it's starting with hoffenium, Z equals to 72, and ending at mercury. Student, if I talk about this 5D series element, the elements are lanthanum, then we'll have hoffenium, then we'll have tantalum, then we'll have tungsten, then we'll have rhenium, then we'll have osmium, then we'll have iridium, then we'll have platinum, then we'll have gold, and finally we will have mercury. Just like other series, here also we'll have one mnemonic. La hafta varna re usse iron rod se pitai aur hogi. Let me tell you. La hafta. L-A. La. H-F. Hafta. Hafta. So this one, lanthanum, hoffenium and tantanum. La hafta. You can easily learn that, right? Then, varna. Tungsten. Rhenium. Varna. Re. Osmium. Usse. Iron rod se. IR stands for iridium and that is iron rod se. Platinum stands for pit, pitai. Aurum, gold stands for or. Ogi, mercury. Am I clear, students? So, those who understand little bit of Hindi can learn this mnemonic. La, hafta, varna, 
रे उससे आयरन रॉड से आयरन रॉड से पिटाई और होगी नाउ आई कैन इजली राइट द एलिमेंट लैंथेनम हॉफिनियम टेंटेलम टनस्टन रेनियम ऑस्मियम इरिडियम प्लेटिनम गोल्ड एंड मकरी am i clear students now it's time to discuss the electronic configuration of these five day series now if i talk about lanthanum it's having a configuration 5d1 6s2 then hafenium 5 here i will have 4f 14 here i will have 6s2 5d2 then we'll have all 14 4f will Here, this 4f will be completely filled in 5d series just after lanthanum after lanthanum then we fill all the 4f subcells are completely filled and then only the electron enters into 5d subcell am i clear students so hey, students here can we say z effective will be somewhat more because this 4f subcell is having poor shielding effect we'll talk about that now so here students tantanum 4d3 and then we'll have 6s2 then we'll have 4d4 6s2 no no d5 am i clear 6s2 4d4 then we'll have 5 6s2 then we'll have 6 6s2 then we'll have 7 6s2 and students now here we'll have 9 this one is once again exception platinum exception 5d 96s1 student now will have this one that is 5d 10 6s1 5d 10 6s2 am i clear so student this is all about 5d series student let's move ahead quick to remember the configuration if i talk about 3d series 3d series in 3d series we won't use the configuration d4 and d9 so instead of d4 use d5 instead of d9 use d10 repeat d10 twice repeat d5 twice am i clear next 4d series in 4d series i am not going to use d3 d6 and d9 configuration d3 d6 and d9 configuration they are not used so repeat d5 and d10 configuration am i clear we have learned that d10 configuration it was there in pd then it was there for ag then it was there for cd right then in 5d series i am not going to use d8 configuration directly we'll have d9 configuration for platinum and then for other two element that is gold and mercury i am going to use repeat d10 configuration am i clear student so this is how we can learn the electronic configuration of all the d block elements i hope the things are crystal clear to you shall we move ahead let's move ahead students now it's time to discuss periodic properties of d block elements so the first property which i am going to discuss is variation in atomic red dye trend in atomic radius atomic radius let's first of all talk about the variation in atomic red dye across the period as we move from across the period as we move from left to right okay let's first of all talk about 3d series itself 3d series the elements are scandium then we'll have titanium then we'll have vanadium then we'll have chromium manganese then we will have iron cobalt nickel copper zinc student we have studied as we move from left to right across a period z effective increases and because of that atomic red dye decreases right but in d block elements we have certain exceptions basically students atomic red dye 
इन जनरल डिपेंड्स ऑन टू फैक्टर एटॉमिक रेडाइट डिपेंड्स ऑन टू फैक्टर द फर्स्ट वन इज सिग्मा सील्डिंग इफेक्ट सील्डिंग इफेक्ट एंड द सेकेंड वन इज जेड इफेक्टिव इफेक्टिव न्यूक्लियर चार्ज इफेक्टिव न्यूक्लियर चार्ज इफ जेड इफेक्टिव विल डोमिनेट वट विल हैपन साइज विल स्ट्रिंक इफ दिस वन विल डोमिनेट इफ सिग्मा विल डोमिनेट इट्स बेसिकली रिप्रेजेंटिंग द रिपल्सिव फोर्स राइट सो इफ सिग्मा विल डोमिनेट साइज विल इंक्रीज इफ जेड इफेक्टिव विल डोमिनेट वट विल हैपन Size will shrink. Student, now in 3D series, basically as we move from scandium to titanium to vanadium to chromium to manganese, from here to here, from scandium to manganese, basically Z effective dominates over sigma screening constant. So if Z effective will dominate over sigma, what will happen? If if effective nuclear charge is dominating over repulsive force, the net force will be towards nucleus, and because of that, size will shrink. So as we move from scandium to manganese, atomic radii decreases from here to here. Am I clear? From scandium to manganese, atomic radii decreases. Then, from iron to nickel, Z effective. and sigma they are almost the same and if repulsive force and attractive force if they are almost the same can i say the size will almost remain same although there will be a much a bit slight increase but almost we assume it to be a constant so we will write atomic radii of iron will be equals to or will be almost equal to co cobalt Almost equal to nickel. Why it's so? Because here Z effective and sigma they are counterbalancing each other. Basically, as I am moving from scandium to zinc, electron the number of electrons in 3D subcell is increasing, which results in increased repulsive force, which basically increases the value of sigma, right? so if the value of sigma will start increasing a time will come when z effective and sigma they will counterbalance each other and here we observe the similar case in case of iron cobalt and nickel so student from scandium to manganese size decreases from iron to nickel the size remains constant and then copper and zinc they have completely filled n minus 1 d subcell more electrons are there in 3d subcell and this 3d subcell more if more electrons will be there obviously the number of inner electrons has increased repulsion will dominate and here students in case of copper and zinc sigma is greater than z effective if sigma dominates over z effective repulsive force dominates over attractive force size will increase so student as we move from scandium to manganese first atomic radii decreases from iron to nickel almost remains constant and again increases from copper to zinc am i clear same property we observe even in 4d series also i hope the things are crystal clear now student now it's time to discuss what happens to atomic radii as we move from 3d to 4d and 4d to 5d let's discuss about that also down the group down the group student as we move from 3d to 4d series there is addition of one energy cell addition of one energy cell energy cell and if the number of energy cell will increase can i say atomic radii will increase so as we move from 3d to 4d 4d atomic radius atomic radius increases 
increases. Basically, if I talk about scandium and if I talk about yttrium, which one will have larger size? Yttrium. Am I clear, students? If I talk about van titanium and if I talk about zirconium, this zirconium will have larger atomic radii as compared to titanium. Now, but if we move from 4D to 5D, size almost remains constant. If I talk about the elements like this, student in 4D series, we have the elements zirconium, niobium, whereas in 5D series, just after lanthanum, we have the elements hafenium, we have tantalum, right? Now, if I talk about the size of zirconium and hafenium, it's almost the same. If I talk about the size of niobium and tantalum, it's almost the same. Can you tell me the reason? Basically, students, there are two factors. As we move from 4D to 5D, there is addition of energy cell. Because of that, the size should increase. As we move from 4D to 5D, there is addition of one energy cell. And if there is addition of energy cell, the size should increase. But at the same time, basically in 5D series, as I move from lanthanum to hafenium to tantalum, in between this, so, as we move from lanthanum to hafenium, we have completely filled 4F subcell. And this 4F subcell is having a poor shielding. And if shielding is poor, what will happen? Z effective on outermost electron will increase. We have studied lanthanide contraction, right? And if Z effective on outermost cell will increase, obviously the side should shrink. Right, student? So, the two, one factor is increasing the size, that is the addition of energy cell, whereas this factor, this lanthanide contraction is decreasing the size. The net result is they counterbalance each other and size of zirconium is almost same as that of hafenium. Size of niobium is almost same as that of tantalum and so on. Am I clear, students? So, this is that variation in the atomic radii across the period and down the group in transition element. Let's plot the graph. Atomic radii, atomic radii and the elements. If I talk about 3D series, first from a scandium to manganese, the size decreases then it almost remains the same and then it increases from copper to zinc. This is for scandium and this one again for copper and zinc. From here I will have iron to nickel and here till here I will have manganese. So from scandium to manganese the size is decreasing. From iron to nickel the size is remaining constant and from copper to zinc the size is increasing. This is 3D series. Next one, 4D series. As we move from 3D to 4D, the atomic radii increases. Right? Same property. Remains constant, increases. Now, this is for 4D. And 4D and 5D. They will have almost similar atomic radii. This is for 5D. I hope students, you people are crystal clear with this variation in or trend in atomic red dye. Shall we move ahead? Let's move ahead students. Students, moving to the next property, next trend that we need to discuss is the variation in ionization enthalpy in D block elements. Ionization enthalpy factor or ionization energy factor. This factor is also really, really important. Ionization energy. How do we define it? The amount of energy required to remove one electron from an isolated gaseous atom. Right? Okay. Basically, this is endothermic. 
Now, student, if I talk about the ionization energy of D block element, ionization energy of D block element is greater than that of ionization energy of S block element. Can you tell me the reason? Basically, as we move from left to right in a period, atomic size decreases. So, the si atomic size of these D block elements are lesser. AR atomic radii of D block element is less as compared to the atomic radii of S block element. Smaller the size, higher will be the Z effective. I will be ionization enthalpy, right? So, ionization enthalpy of D block element larger than that of S block element, but smaller than that of P block element. Next, student, if I talk about this ionization energy, it mainly depends on three factors. Ionization energy, it mainly or primarily depends on three factors. Factor number one, ionization energy inversely proportional to atomic radii, atomic radius, directly proportional to Z effective, and also directly proportional to stability of configuration. Of configuration in general, half filled and full filled, or sub cells are more stable, so their ionization enthalpy will be more. Am I clear, students? Ionization enthalpy inversely proportional to atomic radii, directly proportional to Z effective. Higher the effective nuclear charge, more will be the ionization enthalpy. Okay, now let's see the trend. Friends, now let's see the variation of this ionization energy across a period and down the group. First, let's talk about variation in ionization energy. Variation in ionization energy across, across a period. As we move from left to right in a period, what happens? Let's talk about 3D series. The elements are scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, then we have iron. Then we have cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. This is 3D series. 4D series also, let me write. 4D series, yttrium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, technetium, ruthenium, rhodium, yari, jara, nibhana, mot, tak, rukavate, ra, me, pade, Pade, agar, koi, you can easily remember the elements involved. This is 4D series and 5D series, the elements are La, Apta, Varna, Re, Usse, then Iron Rod Se, Pitai, or hogi right so this is 5d series now basically if i talk about 3d series as we move from scandium to manganese even up to iron basically what's happening size is decreasing and with decrease in size what will happen ionization enthalpy will increase so from scandium to mangan iron ionization energy will increase now from cobalt to nickel to copper what's happening but now here repulsive force is dominating z effective is somewhat less dominating and if z effective is less dominating what will happen ionization energy will decrease and again from copper to zinc ionization energy will increase why because zinc is having a completely filled 3d 10 4s2 much more stable configuration so this zinc will have higher ionization enthalpy as compared to copper once again from copper to zinc ionization energy will increase so basically students 
in 3D series from scandium to iron, iron ionization energy increases. Then from cobalt to copper, ionization energy decreases. Again from copper to zinc, ionization energy increases. Same property. Now it's time to discuss the variation of ionization energy down the group. Let's focus on these three elements. Copper, Ag, Au. These elements are referred as coinage elements. Now, copper 3D series elements, silver 4D series elements, and gold 5D series. Basically, as we move from 3D to 4D, as we move from 3D to 4D, what will happen? Atomic radii will increase. With increase in atomic radii, ionization energy will decrease. So, which will which one will have? Higher ionization enthalpy, copper, between copper and silver, 4D series, 3D series, 4D series elements, atomic radii more, ionization enthalpy less. So, ionization energy of copper will be more as compared to silver. But between silver and gold, now you will say, sir, so, as we move from 4D to 5D, atomic radii remains same. But student, because of this 4F subcell, what happens? Z defective increases. And with increase in Z defective, what will happen? Ionization energy will increase. So, student, if I have to compare the ionization energy of silver and gold, which one will have higher ionization energy? Gold. Now, if I have to compare the ionization energy order of these coinage elements it will be maximum for gold ionization energy order maximum for gold then for copper and least for silver same even with group 12 elements maximum for mercury then for zinc and then for cadmium I hope you understood the variation of ionization energy across the period and down the group. Am I clear, students? Please copy it and then we'll move ahead. Moving ahead, the next property which we are going to discuss is there on the screen and it's the variation in melting point of D block element. Let's first of all try to understand this word melting point. It's nothing but the temperature or the minimum temperature at which an element is there in its molten state or fused state. Fused state. Now, student, if I talk about melting point, it simply depends on lattice energy. It simply depends on intermolecular force of attraction. In case of metal, the intermolecular force of attraction which is operating is metallic bonding. Now, so for D block elements, since they are metals only, melting point of these D block element will simply depend on one factor and that is what? Metallic bonding. Student, if I talk about the melting point of these D block elements, it's higher as compared to S block element because the strength of metallic bonding, the extent of metallic bonding is more in D block element as compared to S block element. Now, student, if I talk about this metallic bond strength, a strength of metallic bond, strength of metallic bond of any element simply depends on one factor and that is directly proportional to the number of unpaired electron. Unpaired electron more is the number of unpaired electron, higher will be the strength of metallic bonding, higher will be the melting point of that particular element. If there is no unpaired electron in the electronic configuration of any element, then there that particular element, the extent of metallic bonding will be less, the strength of metallic bonding will be less and melting point will be less. So that particular element will be highly volatile. Am I clear student? 
सो मेटालिक बॉन्डिंग बॉइलिंग पॉइंट ऑफ दीज ब्लॉक एलिमेंट सिंपली डिपेंड्स ऑन वन फैक्टर दैट इज मेटालिक बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ एंड मेटालिक बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ सिंपली डिपेंड्स ऑन वन फैक्टर दैट इज द नंबर ऑफ अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन एम आई क्लियर स्टूडेंट लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द स्लाइड मेल्टिंग पॉइंट एंड बॉइलिंग पॉइंट ऑफ डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट इज ग्रेटर देन डेट ऑफ एस ब्लॉक एलिमेंट रीजन इज स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मेटालिक बॉन्डिंग हायर एक्सटेंट ऑफ मेटालिक बॉन्डिंग नेक्स्ट वन मेटालिक पॉइंट मेल्टिंग पॉइंट एंड बॉइलिंग पॉइंट डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्सनल टू मेटालिक बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ यस एंड दिस मेटालिक बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्सनल टू नंबर ऑफ अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन इन एन माइनस वन एथ डी सब सेल और इवन इट सिंपली डिपेंड्स द टोटल नंबर ऑफ अनपेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन am i clear next one initially melting point increases then decreases as we move across 3d series why we will talk about that don't worry just after this we will talk about this particular point highly highly important one next students there are certain elements like group 12 elements that is zinc cadmium and mercury they have completely filled n minus 1 d sub cell there we don't have any number of unpaired electron the number of unpaired electron is zero so strength of metallic bonding is less so these elements have less melting and boiling points they are more volatile zinc cadmium and mercury they are more volatile as they don't have unpaired electrons in d sub cell they are volatile elements right okay manganese and technetium has comparatively low molt melting point due to weak metallic bonding because of half filled stable configuration this one is also really really important this manganese if i talk about the configuration of manganese 3d5 4s2 4s completely filled 3d5 half filled much more stable configuration so the strength of bonding extent of bonding it will have less tendency to bond right already it's there in the stable state so the strength of metallic bonding will be less so melting point will be somewhat less as compared to chromium if i am asked to compare the melting point of chromium and manganese chromium will have higher melting point am i clear student let's move ahead chromium molybdenum and tungsten have high melting point due to more number of unpaired electrons more is the number of unpaired electron this one if i talk about chromium 3d5 4s1 total of 6 unpaired electron more is the number of unpaired electron higher is the strength of metallic bonding higher will be the melting point moving down the group melting point increases why because as we move down the group atomic red dye increases molecular weight increases so london force will increase right intermolecular force of attraction will increase and this melting and boiling point also depends on intermolecular force of attraction higher is the intermolecular force of attraction higher will be the melting point so 4d elements will have higher melting point as compared to 3d elements right and 5d even more higher right students okay so this is the trend of melting point for 5d elements have higher melting point as compared to 4d and 4d is having higher melting point as compared to 3d student if i compare the melting point of 3d elements it's increasing from scandium to titanium to vanadium to chromium because the number of unpaired electrons number of unpaired electrons electrons increases from scandium to chromium then this manganese more stable configuration more stable configuration configuration if the configuration is more stable the strength of metallic bonding less melting point less then from iron to nickel almost it's remaining constant although it's somewhat decreasing because the number of pairing paired electrons is now increasing so metallic bond strength will somewhat less and zinc completely filled electrons 
right? Completely filled, n minus 1 is d sub cell. So we'll have very less melting point. I hope this melting point thing is crystal clear to you all. Student, here only we need one more, st we study one more terminology and that is enthalpy of atomization. Just like melting point, this enthalpy of atomization also depends on strength of metallic bonding. And this strength of metallic bonding depends on number of unpaired electron. So more is the number of unpaired electron, higher will be the strength of metallic bonding. And higher is the strength of metallic bonding, higher will be the enthalpy of atomization. Enthalpy of atomization. Let me write here itself. Can you define it? Enthalpy of atomization. The amount of energy required to convert a pure element in it into its gaseous, isolated gas state. It's moving ahead, the next property which we are going to discuss is there on the screen and it is oxidation state or variation in oxidation state of d block elements how do we define this term oxidation state the net fictitious charge the net imaginary charge appearing on a particular element when all the bonds from this particular elements are removed right now student if i talk about a d block element basically d block element shows variable oxidation state can you tell me the reason behind this? Student, if I talk about the configuration of D block elements, it's having a configuration of N minus 1 D 1 to 10 NS 0 to 2. Now, student, apart from this S subcell, electrons can also be removed from this N minus 1 D subcell. Right? Why electrons can be removed? Because of the small energy gap, small energy gap between N minus 1 D and NS. Apart from this NS subcell, electrons can be removed from this N minus 1 D subcell also. That's why this D block element exhibits variable oxidation state. D block element shows variable oxidation state because of a small difference in the energies of NS and N minus 1D orbitals or subcell. If the energy gap is less, apart from this NS, electrons can also be removed from N minus 1D, and that's why these D block elements shows variable oxidation state. What are the different step possible oxidation state? We'll talk about that. Even the same story is there with this a block elements also. We'll talk about that. A block element shows variable oxidation state due to a small difference in the energy of NS, N minus 1D, and N minus 2F subcell. The energy gap is relatively less, right? If I talk about the energy gap between 3D and 4S, the energy is almost similar. All the 3D is having somewhat higher energy. But the gap is relatively less. So apart from this 4S, electrons can be removed from 3D. And that's why a D block element shows variable oxidation state. Okay, let's move ahead. Student, if I talk about the maximum stable oxidation state of any D block elements, it's always equals to N plus 2. This 2, number of electrons taken from NS subcell and n the total number of unpaired electron in n minus 1th d subcell total number of unpaired electron in n minus 1th d subcell is n and 2 the number of electrons that can be removed from ns subcell students now let's talk about the various possible oxidation state of 3d elements or 3d series this is really, really important. You must know this particular series, oxidation state of this particular series is really, really important. That's why I have taken this particular slide. Student, if I talk about this element scandium, 
it exhibits only one oxidation state and that is the oxidation state of plus 3. 3D 1 4H2 so basically after removing all the three electrons it will achieve the configuration of carbon that's why this scandium shows plus three oxidation state rather than showing plus two also it also shows plus three it does not show plus two because after removing three electrons it's achieving the configuration of argon a much more stable configuration this one is important then titanium 3d2 4s2 so i can remove two electrons from here so plus two i can remove one more electron from here so plus three even one more electron from here so titanium will show plus two plus three and plus four oxidation state then vanadium 3d 3 4 s 2 2 electrons that can be taken from here and we have three unpaired electrons one at a time i can remove so plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and plus 5 vanadium shows all the possible oxidation state that is plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and plus 5 next chromium student this one is important we write 3d 5 4 s 1 right now you will say sir i can remove this one ox one electrons from here so it can so also exhibit oxidation state of plus one but chromium does not show oxidation state of plus one chromium exhibits the oxidation state of plus two plus three plus four plus five and plus six that is basically here we adopt this ground this configuration 3d4 4s2 am i clear students next manganese now this manganese will show oxidation state from plus 2 to plus 7 3 4s2 3d5 so five unpaired electrons in 3d and two electrons here so total seven so the maximum oxidation state of manganese is plus seven whereas the maximum oxidation state of chromium is plus six these things are really really important plus six for chromium plus seven for manganese iron plus 2 2 plus 6 cobalt plus 2 2 plus 5 2 3 4 5 i hope you understood number of unpaired electron in n minus 1 d number of unpaired electron in n minus 1 d plus n s right okay nickel plus 2 n plus 3 now this oxidation state of copper is really really important it shows plus 1 and plus 2 oxidation state in aqueous form this plus 2 oxidation state is more stable student if i talk about zinc zinc shows only one oxidation state and that is the oxidation state of plus 2 zn plus 2 if it attains this zn plus 2 it will attain pseudo inert configuration a much more stable configuration right zinc only one oxidation state that is plus two copper two possible oxidation state plus one and plus two manganese plus two two plus seven copper plus one plus two chromium from plus two to plus six not plus one scandium plus three only am i clear students so please copy all these things students these are some of the very important stable oxidation state if i talk about chromium the most stable oxidation state is plus three that's why you will see maximum time chromium from plus six it will go to plus three why it goes to plus three configuration because we have studied the splitting of these subcell right it splits into two energy level t2g and ag if I talk about Cr plus 3, oh, it's basically here in T2G we have 1, 1, 1 electron. So this T2G subcell is half filled and a half filled configuration is much more stable configuration. Am I clear students? Next one, manganese plus 2, once again half filled configuration 3D5, 4S2, 4S remove 3D5, half filled much more stable scandium and zinc already we have discussed scandium inert configuration and zn plus 2 why zn plus 2 is more stable because it's having a pseudo inert configuration 18 electrons in the 
आउटर मोस्ट सेल और दैट इज पेनल्टीमेट सेल कॉपर प्लस टू ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट इन एक्वस फॉर्म इज मोर स्टेबल वाई बिकॉज ऑफ हाई हाइड्रोजन एनर्जी ऑल द कॉपर अंडरगो डिस्प्रोपोर्शनेशन दिस सी यू प्लस वन रेडली अंडरगो डिस्प्रोपोर्शनेशन इट गेट्स कन्वर्टेड टू कॉपर एज वेल एज कॉपर प्लस टू I hope these things are crystal clear to you all. These oxidation state chromium plus three because half filled configuration of T two G one 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 electrons in this T two G. Then manganese plus two half filled configuration three D five configuration. Candium argon configuration Z N plus two pseudo inert configuration copper plus two higher hydration energy in the aqueous state. right so i hope these things are crystal clear to you all let's move ahead students moving ahead the next thing that we need to understand is the variation of oxidation state down the group student as we move down the group the stability of higher oxidation state increases okay let's talk about it ni it So is plus two and plus four oxidation state. Pt so plus two and plus four oxidation state. This is five D, and this one is three D series. If I talk about nickel, nickel in plus two is more stable as compared to nickel in plus four, whereas platinum in plus four is more stable as compared to platinum in plus two oxidation state. Down the group, stability of higher OS increases. Am I clear? Palladium in plus four is more stable as compared to palladium in plus two. I hope these things are crystal clear. Student, if I talk about this iron, rhodium, and osmium, osmium is able to exhibit oxidation state of even plus eight because down the group stability of higher oxidation state increases. Osmium forms a compound OSO four. We have studied it, right? while studying hydrocarbon we have studied this formation of syndiol right whenever alkene is treated with o cold dilute oso4 we will have the formation of syndiol system okay student here it's having oxidation state of plus 8 similarly if i talk about the stability of chromium and tungsten plus 6 tungsten in plus 6 is more stable configuration as compared to chromium in plus 6 my clear students students one more interesting point related to this oxidation state student highest oxidation state of an element of a d block element mainly of an element rather than saying element let's say higher oxidation state of d block element is stable is stable this word keyword stable with highly electronegative like elements like oxygen and fluorine if d block elements have formed compound with oxygen and fluorine then even in the higher oxidation state it will be much more stable but if we have to compare between fluorine and oxygen oxygen is more favorable because of its multiple bond formation tendency right mno4 minus K in KMnO4, MnO4 minus. This oxygen forms p pi d pi bond with manganese, whereas fluorine cannot form multiple bonds, right? So, higher oxidation state is much more stable if d block element forms a compound with oxygen. That's why we can see MnO4 minus existing CrO6 or CrO4 two minus. Cr in plus six oxidation state, Cr two O seven two minus. All these compounds are highly stable, and here the elements are there in the higher oxidation state, plus six oxidation state. Chromium has formed a compound with highly electronegative element like oxygen. Now, student, this MnF seven does not exist. Why? Fluorine is not having a tendency to form multiple bonds. It does not form p pi d pi bond. Am I clear, students? XCF8 does not exist, but XCO4 exists. Am I clear? Let's move ahead, student. Now, with increase in the oxidation state, 
can I say if I am having an element with oxidation state plus 2, plus 3, plus 5 and plus 7, can I say as we move from plus 2 to plus 6 oxidation state, Lewis acidic strength is increasing. Right? Lewis acidic strength if it's increasing, obviously the oxide will be having more acidic nature. We can also understand it like this. More is the charge. More will be the covalent character of the compound formed from it. Poisson's rule, right? Student, if I am having MnO, MnO2, Mn2O7, here manganese plus 7 oxidation state, plus 4 oxidation state, plus 2 oxidation state. Which oxide will have more covalent character? More is the charge on cation, more is the polarization of anion, more is the covalent character. More is the covalent character, higher is the acidic nature of oxide. So, students, if a element or if a D block element is there in higher oxidation state, then its oxide will be acidic in nature. Whereas, if the element is there in the lowest oxidation state, in that case, it will have maximum ionic character. And if ionic character is more, obviously the oxide will be basic in nature. So if oxidation state is less, the oxide will be basic. If oxidation state is highest, then the oxide will be acidic. And if it's in between, intermediate oxidation state, in that case, it will be amphoteric. Manganese plus 4 oxidation state. The minimum is plus 2 and maximum is plus 7. So, it is intermediate, right? In between plus 2 and plus 7. So, MnO2 will be having a amphoteric behavior. Cr2O3, chromium in plus 3 oxidation state, right? Once again, this chromium will have amphoteric. So, if oxidation state of a D block element is in between higher and lower, then the oxide will have amphoteric character, if the oxidation state is minimum, the compound will have maximum ionic character, oxide will be basic, whereas if a D block element is there in its highest oxidation state, then the oxide formed in that case will have maximum covalent character and the oxide will be having an acidic behavior. Covalent character max. Character maximum. Right? Let's move ahead. Student, moving ahead, the next property that we need to discuss is the catalytic property of D block elements. D block elements are used in various reactions as a catalyst. And why do they act as a catalyst? Because of variable oxidation state, because of variable valency and free valency on their surface. Basically, D block element shows variable oxidation state. They are having a variable valency. And because of variable valency, they exhibit the property of catalyst. They are widely used as a catalyst. Lot of time we use this D block element as catalyst in organic chemistry. Hydrogenation reaction we have studied. Ni, PDPT. They are used as a catalyst in hydrogenation reaction. Basically, on the surface of these metals, hydrogen gas are adsorbed. Right, students? Catalytic property is high in powdered form. Obviously, with grinding, the net surface area increases. And if the surface area will increase, obviously, the reaction site will increase. The catalytic behavior will be much more significant. So, if the element is there in the powdered form. In that case, surface area is more and catalytic property is high. If I talk about few catalysts of D block elements, they are vanadium pentoxide V2O5. We have studied in contact process for the preparation of H2SO4. Right, student? Then we have studied this PT for the preparation of the HNO3 nitric acid. Right, Ostwald theory we have studied for the preparation of HNO3, and there we use this catalyst platinum. Even we use this catalyst platinum in hydrogenation reaction. NiPdPt. 
नेक्स्ट वन CuCl2 Deccan's process for the preparation of chlorine. We'll study about it in P block element in the upcoming chapter. Then NiPdPtO. I was talking about this only. We use this NiPdPt catalyst in hydrogenation reaction. Shall we move ahead? Let's move ahead. Student, apart from this catalytic property, D block elements also have a tendency to form alloy. Now you will say, sir, what do we mean by the term alloy? It's nothing but homogeneous mixture of two metals. It's a solution only. Solution of metals where the solute and solvent both are metals only. Alloy, mixture of metals in a definite ratio in solid state is nothing but alloy. Alloy. We say it as alloy. Okay. D block elements exhibit similarity in their size. Yeah, the size are almost comparable. And students, only those elements will form alloy where the atomic size the, does not differ by 15%. So if two elements A and B, A and B, if they are forming alloy, the size of A and size of B should not differ. Should by 15%. It should be in the range of 15% only. Am I clear students? Okay. D block elements exhibit similarity in their size. So they can be replaced by another metal in a metallic crystal. We can see like this. Almost the size is similar. So I am having a particular element A. And here in this metallic crystal of A. Basically I have re replaced one, one or two atoms by atom B and now I have formed a homogeneous mixture and it's nothing but alloy. Atoms of different metals. Homogeneous mixture of atoms of different D block metals and it's nothing but alloy. Right? Now students, these, this particular table and data, this one is really, really important. Lot of time questions are asked. Bronze is an alloy of. Although we have studied these things from class 9th and 10th onwards. Bronze, brass, German silver, alnico, inva, steel. Nothing to tell. Simple information based. Information based. So you need to remember these, the composition of these alloy. Am I clear students? If I talk about the alloy of metal, if metal forms an alloy with mercury, it is referred as amalgam. We have studied about that also. FeCO and Ni do not form amalgam with Hg because of size difference. If size difference is high, in that case, alloy cannot be formed because size difference should not be greater than 15%. Am I clear, student? So, shall we move ahead? Let's move ahead. Student, moving ahead, the next property that we need to study is formation of interstitial compounds. D block elements also form interstitial compounds. What do we mean by the term interstitial compounds? Basically, in the crystal lattice, when a small size element gets trapped in the crystal lattice, Basically, these small size elements like hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, boron are trapped in large metallic crystal and then a interstitial compound is formed. Basically, trapping of small size elements in a metallic crystal is nothing but the formation of interstitial compound. We have interstitial voids in the metallic crystal, right? right? As we do the packing of these metallic crystals, we will have interstitial voids. Now, in these voids, if some elements get trapped, which elements? Hydrogen, carbon, boron. These are the small size elements. Nitrogen. If they get trapped, then they form interstitial compound. Am I clear, student? Let's move ahead. In the crystal of tungsten, carbon gets trapped and we get a interstitial compound tungsten carbide similarly in the metallic crystal of iron carbon gets trapped and we will have the formation of interstitial compound fe3c in the metallic crystal of titanium hydrogen gets trapped and we will have the formation of a non-stoichiometric compound tih1 
1.3 to 1.8 right pile and move ahead students now let's move ahead density how do we define it density it's nothing but rho represented by the symbol rho and rho is nothing but mass upon volume okay now let's talk about the variation of density across the period and down the curve student as we move from left to right in a period atomic mass increases so this factor is increasing and the volume decreases right as i am moving from scandium to almost manganese even iron then co ni size is almost decreasing right with decrease in size obviously the volume will decrease and density will increase so as we move from left to right in a period density increases now scandium to titanium titanium to vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt up to nickel up to nickel density is increasing now between copper and zinc no doubt the mass of zinc is much more higher but at the same time atomic radii is also higher atomic radii of ar of zinc is greater than ar of copper now student here the radius factor dominates so if the radius factor will dominate density will decrease so density of copper is slightly more as compared to the density of zinc i hope these things are crystal clear now as we move down the group what will happen mass will increase and this increase in mass is much more dominant factor 3d to 4d 3d to 4d mass increases to a high extent and if mass will increase obviously density will increase significantly now from 4d to 5d mass increases to a very very high extent and size almost remains constant due to this 4f electrons electrons present in 4f subcell lanthanide contraction right and because of that size almost remains constant mass increases to a higher extent size remains constant can i say density will increase to a very high extent so as we move from 3d to 4d density increases but as we move from 4d to 5d density increases to a very very high extent as we can see here right now student the maximum density is for iridium 5d elements right and if i talk about the minimum density it's for scandium in d block element scandium is having a minimum density i hope these things are crystal clear there is no much more concept hidden behind these things simple plain information right so shall we move ahead let's move ahead now interesting thing will come in moving ahead the next property that we need to discuss is there on the screen and it's magnetic properties of d block elements students whenever this magnetic field is applied to a d block elements three different behavior is observed some of the d block element in its ground state or in its ionic state gets attracted in the magnetic field such d block substances are referred as paramagnetic one some of them gets repelled in the magnetic field such d block substances are referred as diamagnetic substances and some of them gets strongly attracted in the magnetic field and then they retain their magnetic behavior such as substances are referred as ferromagnetic substances we'll discuss about these one by one student the strength of the magnetic field is basically measured in terms of magnetic moment and this magnetic moment is represented by the symbol mu and mu equals to n into n plus 2 under root under root n into n plus 2 what is n here n is the number of unpaired electrons number of unpaired electron in n minus 1th d subcell am i clear now what is this bm bm is the unit of magnetic moment it's basically referred as bohr magneton 
बोर मैग्ने एम आई क्लियर स्टूडेंट लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट दीज थ्री मैग्नेटिक स्पीसीज द फर्स्ट वन पैरा मैग्नेटिक स्पीसीज ऑल द स्पीसीज विच गेट्स अट्रैक्टेड इन द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड आर रेफर्ड एज पैरा मैग्नेटिक स्पीसीज द सब्सटेंस विच आर अट्रैक्टेड बाई अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज रेफर्ड एज पैरा मैग्नेटिक सब्सटेंस basically they contain unpaired electrons in their n minus 1th d subcell if the number of unpaired electron is non zero substance is paramagnetic means mu should be not equals to zero the magnetic moment of the substance if it's non zero the substance will be referred as paramagnetic and it will get attracted in the magnetic field the character is developed due to the presence of unpaired electrons most of the transition metal ions of the compound shows paramagnetic behavior why because of the presence of unpaired electrons in their different oxidation state mn plus 2 yeah if i talk about this mn plus 2 there is five unpaired electron the number of unpaired electron is 5 if i talk about mu mu is equals to 5 into 5 plus 2 so it's under root 35 bohr magneton mu is non zero all such substance whose mu is non zero whose magnetic moment is non zero is referred as paramagnetic substance next one diamagnetic substance all such substance which gets repelled in the magnetic field and why do they get repelled due to completely paired electrons this characteristic is developed due to the absence of unpaired electrons so do diamagnetic substance do not have unpaired electron in n minus 1th d subcell the number of unpaired electron is zero so if number of unpaired electron is zero magnetic moment of such substance will be zero scandium plus 3 3d zero, no electron in n th n minus one th d subcell. Magnetic moment zero, so scandium plus three, paramagnetic or diamagnetic, it will have a diamagnetic behavior. Zn plus two, 3d ten, completely filled. All the n minus one th d orbitals are paired. All the electrons are paired. Number of unpaired electrons zero. If n equals to zero, mu is equals to zero, and the substance will be. diamagnetic so zinc plus 2 is a diamagnetic substance copper plus 1 copper in plus 1 oxidation state diamagnetic am i clear now next one ferromagnetic substance basically all such substance which get strongly attracted in the magnetic field and even after removal of the magnetic field they retain their magnetic character such a substance are referred as ferromagnetic substance if i talk about few ferromagnetic d block elements they are iron cobalt nickel the best example right so it is basically ferromagnetism is the extreme condition of paramagnetism i hope these things are crystal clear to you all what do we mean by paramagnetic there is unpaired electron so mu is non zero diamagnetic mu equals to zero no unpaired electron all the orbitals are completely filled paired all the electrons are paired if i talk about ferromagnetic substance the best example is iron cobalt and nickel it's extreme condition of paramagnetism shall i move ahead let's move ahead now students here we need to find the magnetic moment of these ions co plus 3 cobalt z equals to 27 so co plus 3 number of electrons 24 right student now oh, can i say it will have a configuration 3d6 so if i write the arrangement how do we fill electrons 1 2 3 4 5 and then this one six so how many unpaired electron number of unpaired electron equals to 4 so magnetic moment under root 4 into 4 plus 2 so for cobalt plus 3 the magnetic moment is 24 root 24 cr plus 3 okay chromium 
ट्वेंटी फोर प्लस थ्री ट्वेंटी वन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ट्वेंटी वन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स मीन थ्री डी थ्री कॉन्फ़िगरेशन, राइट थ्री डी थ्री कॉन्फ़िगरेशन। इफ इट्स हैविंग अ थ्री डी थ्री कॉन्फ़िगरेशन, नंबर ऑफ अनपेड इलेक्ट्रॉन थ्री सो मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट विल बी अंडर रूट थ्री इंटू थ्री प्लस टू रूट फिफ्टीन सो फॉर क्रोमियम प्लस थ्री द मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट इज रूट फिफ्टीन आयरन प्लस थ्री ट्वेंटी सिक्स माइनस थ्री थ्री डी फाइव थ्री डी फाइव मीन्स ऑल द फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स अनपेयर्ड राइट तो अंडर रूट फाइव इंटू फाइव इंटू फाइव प्लस टू फाइव इंटू सेवन रूट थर्टी फाइव तो आयरन प्लस थ्री विल हैव अ मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट रूट थर्टी फाइव एंड निकल द लास्ट वन इट विल हैव अ मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट रूट एट बोर मैग्नेट एल आई राइट इट यस लेट्स राइट निकल ट्वेंटी एट राइट ट्वेंटी एट एन आई प्लस टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स थ्री डी एट कॉन्फ़िगरेशन थ्री डी एट कॉन्फ़िगरेशन मीन्स थ्री ब्लॉक्स कंप्लीटली प्योर टू ब्लॉक्स अनपेयर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन नंबर ऑफ अनपेयर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन टू टू इंटू टू प्लस टू अंडर रूट टू इंटू फोर दैट इज रूट एट सो फॉर एन आई प्लस टू द मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट इज रूट एट आई होप this magnetic behavior the calculation of magnetic moment is all crystal clear to you all shall i move ahead let's move ahead it's moving ahead the next property that we need to discuss and that we need to understand is the coloration property of d block element most of the d block elements are colored or most of the transition elements are colored can you tell me why they are colored student they are colored because of the following reason either dd transition occur there either charge transfer phenomenon occur there either they are colored due to polarization or they are colored due to homo lumo transition student if i talk about this homo lumo transition it's mainly responsible for the coloration of halogens not d block element mainly responsible for the coloration of p block element that is fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine whereas rest all these three phenomena whether it is dd transition charge transfer phenomenon or polarization they are responsible for the coloration of d block elements d block elements or ions or compounds we will discuss it one by one dd transition dd transition student if a d block element or ions ions if it is having unpaired electron unpaired electron in its electronic configuration and if it is showing the coloration behavior if it is colored then it is colored due to dd transition phenomenon now what is dd transition phenomenon let us try to understand today just before this particular chapter we have studied coordination chemistry right and there we have studied crystal field theory crystal field theory what we have studied in crystal field theory whenever a ligand approaches in the field of central metal ion the degeneracy of d orbital or d subcell is disturbed this d subcell splits into two different energy level t2g energy level and eg energy level right let's try to understand initially the d subcells or the orbitals are degenerate they are having the same energy level dxy yz xz x square minus y square and dz square now as soon as the ligand approaches in the field basically inter electronic repulsion occurs and then the energy of these subcell increases and finally it is split into two different energy level it will split into two different energy level the first one t2g energy level and the upper one eg energy level this one is t2g and this one is eg now if there is unpaired electron present here 
and if this unpaired electron absorbs energy from outside what will happen it will undergo absorption phenomenon obviously as soon as the electron absorbs energy it will jump to higher energy level and the higher energy level is eg energy level we know higher energy state or excited states are unstable state unstable so what it will happen it will undergo back transition it will undergo back transition and during this process they will emit radiation this radiation will be emitted in the form of electromagnetic waves and the wavelength of these electromagnetic waves in general lies in the visible region that's why we are able to see color and so now i hope you understood what is dd transition and through this dd transition we can explain the color behavior of all the d block elements or ions having unpaired electrons right if a certain species is having unpaired electron and why it is colored we can explain it with the help of dd transition student one more interesting point here basically what's happening here the electron present in t2g is absorbing radiation so basically it is absorbing a certain color and now during this back transition process it is emitting radiation so it is emitting a certain color the color emitted is referred as complementary color complementary color and the color of ions is nothing but the complementary color the color of ion which we see is nothing but complementary color it's not the absorbed color it's the radiated one am i clear students now students we are having a color wagon wheel with the help of this color wagon wheel we can easily tell if a certain color is absorbed which color will be emitted or what will be the color of ions let's try to understand this is my color wagon wheel this one this one and this one vib gear so violet blue green v b g y o r r stands for red orange yellow green blue violet student if a certain ion is absorbing violet color then the complementary color the color radiated will be yellow so if the absorbed color is violet the radiated one will be yellow if the absorbed color is red the radiated one will be green if the absorbed color is blue then the radiated color emitted color emitted color or the color of ion will be orange if the absorbed color is orange then the color of the ion will be blue i hope this color wagon wheel is also crystal clear now you will say sir are only the paramagnetic species colored no there are even there are certain species even diamagnetic species and they are also colored and students the coloration behavior of such diamagnetic species can be explained on the basis of charge transfer phenomenon charge transfer phenomenon phenomenon mainly with the help of this charge transfer phenomenon we can explain why certain compounds why certain diamantic species are colored can you name a few diamantic species which are colored yes mno4 minus cr2o72 minus that is potassium permanganate it's having a purple color potassium dichromate orange color although if i look at the configuration of mn here mn is in plus 7 oxidation state right so it's having a configuration ar 3d0 so basically it's a diamagnetic species and if it's a diamagnetic species it should be colorless but still it is colored similarly chromium chromium here is in plus 6 oxidation state if it's in plus 6 oxidation state it is having a configuration ar 
3D zero. So it's a diamantic species. Still, it is colored. And why it is colored? It is mainly because of charge transfer phenomenon. Let us try to understand. Let me draw this MnO4 minus M. O minus doubly bonded O, doubly bonded O, doubly bonded O. Now, student, here the central metal atom is Mn, and is Mn is there in the plus seven oxidation state. So, can I say it will act as a Lewis acid? It will have a tendency to accept electrons. Accept electrons, right? Now, what happens? Basically. This O minus is an electron rich species. So there is a transition of electrons from this O minus to Mn plus 7. And whenever electronic transition is there, obviously electromagnetic waves get emitted. And whenever we see or whenever electromagnetic waves is emitted, radiated, coloration behavior is observed. Am I clear, students? So, because of this delocalization of, because of the transfer of electron from O minus to Mn plus, this MnO4 minus is able to show color and this phenomenon is charge transfer, transfer of charge, transfer of electron from O minus to Mn plus, right? Mn plus is having a vacant orbital, vacant orbital and because of that it is able to absorb or it is able to accept this electron whenever electronic transition is there coloration behavior is there right students so i hope this particular phenomenon charge transfer phenomenon is clear to you same property is observed even in cro4 cr2072 minus transfer of charge from o negative to cr chromium there in plus six oxidation state all the d subcells are vacant it can easily accommodate electrons so movement of electron will occur transition of electron will occur and because of that coloration behavior will be observed am i clear student let's move ahead students we have one more property left related to the color of or responsible for the color of d block elements or transition elements and that's polarization we have studied this polarization effect right polarization polarization deformation in the size of anion is nothing but polarization now with the help of this polarization effect we can explain the coloration behavior of halides of silver agcl agbr agi as i move from agcl to agi the intensity of color increases can you tell me the reason behind it student it can be simply explained on the basis of polarization basically here the size of cation is fixed size of anion is increasing with increase in the size of anion the deformation will be more more is the deformation more will be the covalent character more will be the sharing of electrons between the atoms more, better will be the tendency of transition electronic transition now student if I talk about the energy gap between Ag plus and I minus, it's relatively less. If the energy gap is less, the wavelength will be more. Energy inversely proportional to wavelength. So student, here the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation emitted during the electronic transition will be more. And if the wavelength of the emitted radiation is more, obviously the color will be intense. Am I clear, students? I hope all these three phenomena, whether it is DD transition, whether it is charge transfer phenomenon, and whether it is polarization, all these three things are crystal clear. Less energy gap, more intense color. Less least energy gap, maximum intense color. Then relatively more, and maximum energy gap, less intense color. Am I clear? So, student, with this the physical properties of d block elements comes to an end now we are going to discuss the compounds of d block element and the first compound which we are going to discuss is there on the screen there on the screen and it's potassium dichromate k2cr207 have we studied about this particular compound yes a strong oxidizing agent 
OA. We have studied about this particular compound, right? Student, if I talk about the structure of this particular compound, potassium dichromate, it's having a structure Cr, O, Cr, and then here we'll have O, O, O minus K plus Cr, Cr, O minus K plus. So what's the oxidation state of H chromium? The oxidation state of H chromium is plus 6. Plus 6. What's the hybridization? 1, 2, 3, 4. Direct number 4. Hybridization sp3. Student, now let's talk about the method of preparation of this potassium dichromate. How it is prepared? It's simply prepared by taking chromite ore. If I take this chromite ore and if we treat it with sodium carbonate, chromite ore treated with sodium carbonate, basically first we get sodium chromate. This sodium chromate is having a yellow color. Till yet, the medium of this reaction is alkaline. Now, what I am going to do, I am going to add H+. See, as soon as we add H plus to this chromate ion, it gets converted to orange colored dichromate ion. So, students now will have the formation of Na2Cr2O7. FeCr2O4 treated with Na2CO3 will have the formation of Na2CrO4, sodium chromate. Add H plus, you will get sodium dichromate. Now, this sodium dichromate is more soluble more soluble soluble solubility is more now what i need to do in order to get this potassium dichromate what we do we add kcl substitution reaction and then we'll have the formation of crystals of this k2cr207 right so to this soluble Na2Cr207 orange colored solution, we get, we add KCl, then we get potassium dichromate. And this potassium dichromate is basically an excellent oxidizing agent. It's an orange colored compound. Am I clear students? Okay, let's move ahead. It's an orange red colored crystalline compound basically to this soluble Na2Cr207 I am adding this KCl in order to get the crystals of this K2Cr207 solubility of sodium dichromate is more as compared to potassium dichromate okay student if I talk about the heating effect the chemical properties on a strong heating it decomposes liberating oxygen so this potassium dichromate will get converted to potassium chromate apart from this potassium chromate will have the formation of Cr2O3 and oxygen gas is liberated am I clear let's move ahead obviously we have discussed it this one more important property student if I talk about this Na2Cr2O7 and K2Cr2O7 this K2Cr2O7 is primarily or widely used in lab rather than sodium dichromate. Why? Because this sodium dichromate is having a hygroscopic nature. It's having a tendency to absorb moisture. That's why this K2Cr2O7 is primarily preferred. Because this what this Na2Cr2O7 will do? This sodium dichromate will absorb the moisture, it will absorb water. Obviously, all the parameters will get disturbed. That's why in titration, in lab, we use potassium dichromate as titrant. Right? Student, if I talk about this chromate and dichromate, the process is reversible. In alkaline medium, dichromate gets converted to chromate. CRO4, 2 minus. CRO4, 2 minus whereas in acidic medium the dichromate sorry the chromate gets converted to dichromate chromate cr o4 2 minus that is o minus o minus this one this is chromate if you add h plus it will get converted to cr2072 minus i have written the structure there right if you add OH minus to this dichromate, you will get chromate. 
I hope that things are crystal clear to you all. Shall I move ahead now? Let's move ahead. Student already discussed it's a strong oxidizing agent. So it's widely used as an oxidizing agent in acidic medium. If this potassium dichromate is treated with H2S, here sulfur is there in minus 2 oxidation state. Hydrogen sulfide will get converted to sulfur. Sulfur zero oxidation state. Right? So what this K2Cr207 is doing? It's oxidizing hydrogen sulfide to sulfur. SO2 to sulfate. Maximum oxidation state plus 6. Nitrite to nitrate. SO3 to minus 2 sulfate. SN plus 2, SNCl2 to SNCl4, SN plus 2 to SN plus 4. If I treat this SN plus 2 with K2Cr207, I am going to get SN plus 4. Next one, Fe plus 2, 2, maximum oxidation state, Fe plus 3. Alcohol to acid, aldehyde to acid. Right, students? Okay. I hope all these things are crystal clear to you all. Shall we move ahead? Okay, let's move ahead. Student, now we are going to discuss one of the most important tests related to this potassium dichromate. K2Cr2O7. Student, whenever this potassium dichromate is treated with NaCl in the presence of acid H2SO4, we get a red orange vapor of chromyl chloride CrO2Cl2. Potassium dichromate K2Cr2O7, you treat it with NaCl, you treat it with H plus or that is H2SO4, the compound which we get is chromyl chloride, the color is very important, orange red or red orange vapor, whatever you say, am I clear? So red orange vapor of chromyl chloride, now to this red orange vapor of chromyl chloride, if you add NaOH, you are going to get a yellow colored solution of sodium chromate Na2CrO4. We have studied about this, right? Now, to this sodium chromate, if you add lead acetate, Pb, CH3, C double bond O, hold twice. To this yellow colored sodium chromate, if you add lead acetate, you are going to get lead chromate. And this lead chromate is having a yellow PPT. Right? Student, basically it's a one of the important tests that we perform in the lab. I hope you have done this particular test. Student, if I talk about certain compounds like AlCl3, PbCl2, PbCl4, HgCl2, Hg2Cl2, they don't give chromyl chloride test. This one is once again important. Lead chromide, lead sorry, lead chloride, HgCl2, Hg2Cl2, all these compounds do not respond towards chromyl chloride test. Am I clear? Shall I move ahead? Let's move ahead now. Students, moving ahead, moving to the next compound of D block element. Once again, this particular compound is also really, really important. And you should know the matter of preparation of the compound. At the same time, you should also know the chemical reactions of this compound. Once again, an excellent oxidizing agent. And the name of the compound is potassium permanganate, AMNO4. Let me draw the structure, manganese. Now, right, right, and here O minus K plus. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Manganese plus 7 oxidation state, right? It's having a, if I talk about the hybridization, sp3, geometry, tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. Right, student? Now, how do we synthesize this potassium permanganate? Basically, whenever we treat a black colored compound pyrolusite O, MnO2, with alkali, we get potassium manganate that is K2MnO4, Mn in plus 6 oxidation state. Now, 
to this K two MnO four to this manganate ion, if we add H plus, basically we get potassium per manganate. If I talk about the commercial method of preparation of potassium permanganate, it's simply prepared by the fusion of pyrolusite O with KOH. As soon as this black colored compound MnO2 is treated with KOH, first we get manganate ion. This manganate ion is green in color. MnO4 minus. Sorry, MnO4 2 minus. Now. This magnet ion on electrolytic oxidation gets converted to per magnet and that is MnO4 minus having a purple color. So commercially it is prepared first by treating pyrolysite with KOH and then we do electrolytic oxidation of magnet ion formed to get per magnet ion. Let's move ahead. Student, if I talk about the physical property, it's a purple colored crystalline compound, right? Student, if I talk about the chemical property, on the strong heating, this potassium power magnet gets converted to magnet. At the same time, we get MnO2 also. So, potassium per magnet. This reaction is important. On strong heating gives us MnO4 2 minus plus MnO2. It's a green colored. It's a purple color. And this one black color. Color is also important. Next one. With concentrated H2SO4, as soon as you add H plus to this KMnO4, basically whenever this potassium power magnet is treated with concentrated H2SO4, this potassium power magnet gets converted to Mn2O7. It's an explosive substance. Mn, Mn, MnO, Mn, MnO, Mn and then this is the structure of Mn2. O7. Am I clear? Shall I move ahead? Let's move ahead, student. Student already discussed it's a strong oxidizing agent in acidic, basic, and even in neutral medium. Right? If I talk about this potassium power magnet, in acidic medium it gets converted to Mn plus 2. N factor is plus 5. In Neutral medium, this KMnO4 gets converted to MnO2, N factor is 3, and in alkaline medium, this KMnO4 gets converted to K2MnO4, N factor is 1. So, from plus 7 to plus 6 in alkaline medium, from plus 7 to plus 4 in neutral medium, and from plus 7 to plus 2 in acidic medium. Now, let's discuss the oxidizing behavior of this KMnO4 in acidic medium. Once again, just like K2Cr2O7, just like K2Cr2O7, this KMnO4 will also oxidize H2S to sulfur. Sulfur here is in minus 2 oxidation state, 0. So, it's getting oxidized. Here, sulfur is in plus 4, plus 6. Sulfur dioxide to sulfate, nitrite to nitrate, Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3, halide ion to halogen, formic acid will get oxidized to H2O and CO2. Student, oxalic acid will get oxidized to CO2. This one is also really, really important. Whenever you treat oxalic acid with KMnO4, the product formed is CO2. If I talk about the oxidation state, here it's in plus 3 oxidation state. Here it's in plus 4 oxidation state. Iosulfide to S4O6 4 minus. Students, in acidic medium, MnO4 minus gets reduced to Mn plus 2. Therefore, it's a strong oxidizing agent in acidic, basic, even in neutral medium. So, these are the reactions or, or these are the oxidation reactions of KMnO4 in acidic medium. Now, let's discuss the oxidizing behavior of KMnO4 in neutral or weakly basic medium. If I talk about neutral medium, 
MnO4 gets converted to MnO2, right? N factor is 3. In neutral medium, if we treat potassium power magnet with Br minus, I will have the formation of BrO3 minus. This reaction is important. In alkaline medium, sorry, in acidic medium, X minus gets converted to X2. If we treat it with MnO4 minus H plus, whereas in neutral medium, this Br minus is getting converted to bromate ion. Iodide ion. I minus getting converted to iodate ion, H2O3 2 minus getting converted to sulfate. Whereas in acidic medium, this H2O3 2 minus was getting converted to S4O6 4 minus. Right? Next, Mn plus 2, MnO2. It's not that important. Okay. So students, that's all about D block element. Now it's time to discuss. F block elements. Why it's called F block elements? Student, here the elements are referred as F block elements. Why? Because the last electron, the differentiating electron, enters into n minus 2th F subcell. Am I clear? That's why the elements are referred as F block elements. It's basically divided in two categories or two series. Just like D block elements, here we divide the entire F block elements in two series. The first one is referred as lanthanide series and the second one is referred as actinide series. Just like D, D block elements where we are having 3D series, 4D series, 5D series and 6D series. Here we have two series, lanthanide series or we say it as 4F series and actinide series we say it as 5F series. Let's discuss about it. Each of these series contains 14 elements. Am I clear students? Okay. The student here, it's called F block elements because the differentiating electrons enters into N minus 2th F subcell. That's why it is referred as F block elements. Am I clear? If I talk about the position of F block elements in periodic table, basically the group number assigned for this F block elements is 3. Group number for F block elements is 3. And if I talk about period number these f block elements are placed in sixth and seventh period seventh period am i clear so group number is clear period number is clear if i talk about the general electronic configuration of f block element the general electronic configuration is n minus 2 f 1 to 14 or you sometimes we can write it 0 to 14 mainly in case of thorium okay then n minus 1 d 0 to 1 sometimes even 2 okay and then ns 2 this is the general electronic configuration of a f block element f block element this F block element is divided in two series, lanthanide series, which starts after the element lanthanum. That's why it is referred as lanthanide series. Basically, this lanthanide series starts with atomic number Z equals to 58 and ends at atomic number 71. Whereas, if I talk about actinide series, it starts with atomic number 90 and ends at 103. If I talk about this lanthanide series, it starts with cerium and ends at laurentium. Lutetium, sorry. It ends at lutetium. Whereas if I talk about this actinide series, it starts with thorium and ends at laurentium. Am I clear students? Laurentium. Now, let's discuss about these lanthanide series and actinide series one by one. Lanthanide series starts with atomic number 58 ends at 71. 4F series, it's also referred as rare earth elements or we say it as inner transition elements. Inner transition, transition elements. Right? 
basically starting with the element cerium and ends at lutetium having atomic number 71. Am I clear? Basically, if I talk about this 4F series, it contains only one radioactive element and that is promethium, PM. Only PM is the radioactive element present in 4F series that is lanthanide series. Am I clear students? In lanthanide series, we have only one radioactive element and that is promethium. If I talk about actinide series, that is 5F series. Here, basically it starts with atomic number 90 and ends at atomic number 103. Starts with the element thorium and ends at laurentium, LR. The symbol is LR. Student, here all the radioactive, all the elements are basically the man-made elements and they are nothing but radioactive elements. Right? Okay, let's move ahead. Student, if I talk about the electronic configuration, this configuration is really, really important. So, just like D block elements where we are having a certain exception in the trend, here also we will have certain exception in the trend. If I talk about 4F series, in 4F series, I am not going to use F0 configuration, I am not going to use F2 configuration, and I am not going to use F8 configuration. This F8, instead of F8, I will repeat two times F7 configuration, right? Now, if I talk about this actinide series here, I'm not going to use F1 configuration. I will directly use F2. Then I will use not use F5. I will not use F8 configuration. Instead of F8, I will repeat F. 7 and I will have the repetition of F14. Am I clear? So student, once again let's revise. If I talk about 4F series, we are not going to use F0 configuration, we are not going to use F2 configuration and F8 configuration. F0, F2, F8. No use. Am I clear? If I talk about this 5F series, F1, F5, F8. So, F8 in both. In case of 5F series, F5 don't use. F5, F, F5 and F1. Whereas, in 4F series, don't use the configuration 0, 2 and 8. 0, 2, 8. 1, 5, 8. Am I clear? These are the configurations which I am not going to use. Student, now let's write the configuration of these elements. Now let's discuss about these 4F and 5F series, the elements involved and the electronic configuration of these lanthanide series and actinide series. First, let's focus on 4F series. Starts with Z equals to 58, ends at Z equals to 71. The last element is lutetium. The first element is cerium. It starts just after lanthanum, right? Basically, if I talk about the configuration, student, here, the configuration is 6s will have 2 electrons throughout. 6s, 2 electrons, 2 electrons, 2 electrons, 2 electrons, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. I'll fill 2 electrons in 6s. Now, in cerium, I will have 1 electron. I'm not going to use D F2 configuration. So, instead of F2, what I will use? F3 configuration. Am I clear students? So, here I will have D1. Here I will have D0. Now, I will use F4, D0. F5, D0. F6, D0. Students, here I will use F7, D. How much? 0 only. Now, once again, I am not going to use D8 configuration. So, what I will use instead of? I will use F7, D1 here in gadonium. F7, D1. Now, here I will have D1 and 6S2. Then, once again, I will have students. Now, I will have F9, D0. F10, D0. F11, D0. 
एफ ट्वेल्व डी जीरो एफ थर्टीन डी जीरो एफ फोर्टीन डी जीरो एफ फोर्टीन डी वन स्टूडेंट सो इफ वी लुक एट द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंफिग्रेशन हियर यू हैव टू कीप इट इन माइंड द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंफिग्रेशन ऑफ सीरियम देन यू कैन रिमेंबर दिस ऑल्सो पिया देन यू कैन रिमेंबर द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंफिग्रेशन ऑफ जी डी एंड देन द लास्ट वन दिस वन लुटेटियम You can learn like this also. In most of the cases, you are having D zero configuration. You will find D one configuration only in case of cerium, in case of gadolinium, and in case of lutetium. Right? In these three elements, you will find D one configuration. Rest in all cases, you are going to get D zero configuration. You won't have. F zero configuration. You won't have F two configuration, and you won't have F eight configuration. Instead of F eight, we will use two times F seven. That's why I am having D one in G D, right? And similarly, we will have the repetition of F fourteen, right? Student, if I talk about the mnemonics developed here for learning these elements. Or learning the elements in lanthanide series, the mnemonic which I have learned so far. Is there in Hindi only, but you can learn it easily. Chemical engineer, chemical engineer or civil engineer. If chemical engineer gets offended, then use civil engineer or computer engineer. I want to use civil engineer. Fir nind me prime minister ke saath. Civil engineer. Fir nind me prime minister ke saath Europe gaye. तभी गड़बड़ हुआ इंजीनियर तुम यहां भी लुटे सी केमिकल इंजीनियर और सिविल इंजीनियर पी आर फिर एनडी नींद में पीएम प्राइम मिनिस्टर एसएम के साथ यू स्टैंड फॉर यूरोप जीडी गए तभी गड़बड़ हुआ हुआ गड़बड़ हुआ इंजीनियर ई आर तुम यहां भी लुटे Am I clear? So this is the mnemonics developed for four F series. Student, I hope now you learn all the you have learned all the elements involved in this four F series. I am also and I also believe you have learned this electronic configuration. The electronic configuration is important. Even if you don't remember the element, please remember the electronic configuration. Lot of time electronic configuration is asked in the competitive exam. Now it's time to discuss five F series. This one is referred as actinide series. It starts with just after the element actinium having atomic number eighty nine. So this five F series starts with atomic number ninety. That's the it starts with thorium. Student, if I talk about the exceptions in electronic configuration. Here I am not going to use one F one configuration. I am not going to use F five configuration, and I am not going to use F eight configuration. Right? Let's focus. Everywhere here also I will have seven S two configuration. So seven S two everywhere. Seven S two, 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 and seven S two. Now. student here i will have f0 configuration and here i will have d2 f0 d2 i am not going to use f1 so i will have d2 configuration this electronic configuration of thorium is really really important then here i will have f2 d1 f3 d1 f4 d1 student now i am not going to use f5 configuration i will directly use f6 configuration 0 now f7 d1 sorry f7 d0 only now here in case of this particular element i am going to use f7 d1 configuration focus on d0 and d1 you can easily then fill the electrons in f subcell okay now once again f9 
डी जीरो एफ टेन डी जीरो एफ इलेवन डी जीरो एफ ट्वेल्व डी जीरो राइट एफ थर्टीन डी जीरो एफ फोर्टीन डी जीरो एंड एफ फोर्टीन डी वन सो स्टूडेंट हेयर यू आर हैविंग डी वन कंफिग्रेशन इन पी ए यू एन पी पी ए यू एन पी राइट दीज थ्री एलिमेंट देन यू आर हैविंग एफ वन डी वन कंफिग्रेशन इन सी एम एंड लास्ट वन लॉरेंसियम एम आई क्लियर स्टूडेंट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द एलिमेंट इन्वॉल्व हेयर एंड द नेमोनिक्स यू कैन लर्न इट लाइक दिस थोड़े पाप यू नापो पुराने आम कम बिकेंगे कैलिफोर्निया आइंस्टीन फॉर्मिनियम मेंडिलिप All are Nobel laureate. Ore paper U Napo thorium. Then we have Pa uranium, neptunium, plutonium. Then purane am kam bikenge berkelium. Then we have Cf. Then we have Es Einstein, Fermium, Mendeleev. All are Nobel laureate, right? But even if you don't want this. these elements learning these elements are not that important the electronic configuration of these elements are important am i clear student so shall we move ahead let's move ahead student now it's time to discuss the properties of these f block elements okay we'll discuss it one by one oxidation state this one is the most important one most of the A block element shows a oxidation state of plus three. All the lanthanides, except few one, in general, the most stable oxidation state of lanthanide elements is plus three. In lanthanides, plus three oxidation state is the most common and the most stable one. Am I clear, student? Except C E and T B. Except C E and T B. And if I talk about the C E T B. pia they basically exhibit a oxidation state of plus 4 now if they are they are in the oxidation state of plus 4 they will have a tendency to go to oxidation state of plus 3 because plus 3 oxidation state is the more stable one so they will get reduced and if they are getting reduced means this ce pr tb all these elements will act as a oxidizing agent am i clear why because most of the lanthanides elements or the most stable oxidation state of lanthanide element is plus 3 these elements sometimes exhibit a plus 4 oxidation state if it's there in plus 4 oxidation state it will have a tendency to go to plus 3 oxidation state if they go to plus 3 obviously they will undergo reduction and the species which undergo reduction are referred as oxidizing agent i hope this particular term is crystal clear next student these two elements yb exhibit a oxidation state of plus 2 and eu also exhibit a oxidation state of plus 2 now the most common oxidation state is plus 3 so they will have a tendency to get oxidized so basically in lanthanide series these two element yb plus 2 and eu acts as a reducing agent this one is really really important these two statements am i clear if i talk about the oxidation state of actinides here also the most common oxidation state is plus 3 but some of the elements also so a oxidation state of plus 4 plus 5 and plus 6 the highest stable oxidation state is plus 6 which is shown by uranium am i clear so i hope the oxidation state of this lanthanide series and actinide series is crystal clear shall we move ahead let's move ahead student if i talk about the magnetic behavior of these f block elements here we have to keep only one thing in mind in general all the lanthanide elements in plus 3 oxidation state all the lanthanide elements in plus 3 oxidation state in general they are paramagnetic all the tripositive lanthanide ions are paramagnetic except la+3 and lu+3 
this one is having a configuration F0 and this one is having a configuration F14. These two are diamagnetic, rest all are paramagnetic. Am I clear? Okay. This gadonium is a ferromagnetic substance. ND exhibits highest paramagnetism and it is mainly due to the combined effect of a spin and orbital magnetic effect. Am I clear students? Let's move ahead. If I talk about the reactions of lanthanides, you can, you can treat this lanthanide just like aluminium having oxidation state of plus 3. So if aluminium combines with oxygen, the compound form is Al2O3. So you need to form a compound like this. If it's there in the oxide state, it will be like this M2O3. If lanthanides are combining with oxygen, it will form a compound like Ln2O3. If it's combining with halogen, if aluminium combines with halogen, we will have the formation of AlCl3, AlF3, AlBr3. So here I will have the formation of LnX3. If it's combined with sulfur, once again, just like oxygen, here I will have the formation of Ln2S3. If it's combined with water, then it forms a base M of the type MOH thrice. If aluminium combines with water, it forms aluminium hydroxide, ALOH whole thrice. So if lanthanide elements combine with water, it forms LNOH whole thrice. Am I clear? With hydrogen, it forms aluminium hydride. Here it will form lanthanide hydride. Right? ALN, here it will form LNN just like aluminium you don't need to bother at all okay next so now let's discuss the difference between lanthanide series and the actinide series student if i talk about the oxidation state the most common oxidation state of lanthanide is plus three the most common oxidation state of actinides is also plus three but actinides apart from plus three oxidation state they exhibit oxidation state of plus four plus five and plus six whereas lanthanides in general show oxidation state of plus three there are few elements which show oxidation state of plus two and plus four also like eu and yb they exhibit oxidation state of plus two whereas se Cerium and all other elements that is PM, they show oxidation state of plus 4. We have studied about that, oxidizing nature and reducing nature. Next, if I talk about the complex formation tendency, lanthanides have less tendency to form complex, whereas actinides, they have higher tendency to form complex. Student, if I talk about radioactive, all the actinides elements are man-made elements. So they are basically radioactive elements. Whereas if I talk about lanthanides, except promethium, all other are non-radioactive elements. Except promethium, they are non-radioactive. Okay, if I talk about the basic nature, lanthanides hydroxides are less basic as compared to actinides hydroxide this one is also important actinides hydroxide is more basic as compared to lanthanum oxides or hydroxides now we have studied both in lanthanides and actinides we will have lanthanide contraction and actinides contraction observed right and because of this lanthanide contraction what will happen the size of iron will decrease as we move from left to right as we move from basically cerium to lutetium what will happen the size of ions will metal ions will decrease it's mainly because of the poor shielding of 4f similarly as we move from thorium to laurentium the size of ions will decrease it's mainly because of actinides contraction actinides contraction and what this act why this actinide contraction is occurring it's mainly because of the poor shielding of 5f if poor shielding of 5f is there obviously z effective will be more size will contract now if you will see which one is a more dominant effect sir lanthanide contraction or actinides contraction 
student the more dominant effect is actinides contraction shielding of 5f is more poor as compared to the shielding of 4f hence actinide contraction is more effective than lanthanide contraction am i clear i hope you understood all these things shall we move ahead let's move ahead now this one basically as we move from left to right in a period as we move from left to right in a period size of iron size of iron decreases we decrease in the size of iron what will happen the electronegative character will develop electronegative character will increase and if electronegative character will increase the basic nature of hydroxide will decrease the student if i talk about laoh hole thrice and luoh hole thrice as we move from lanthanum to lutetium the basic nature of hydroxide goes on decreasing these oxide cerium hydroxide is much more basic as compared to lutetium hydroxide friends i hope you understood the basic nature of hydroxides of these lanthanides this one is really really important lot of time this particular concept has been asked in the exam now let's move ahead the next thing that we are going to discuss is the coloration behavior just like d block elements the inner transition elements also exhibit coloration property there we have dd transition here i will have ff transition so once again here also splitting of f sub cell will occur and if this f sub cell will split into two different energy levels basically electronic transition will occur and whenever electronic transition is occur it's mainly associated with the release of electromagnetic waves and we are going to get a complementary color so color of f block elements is mainly due to ff transition am i clear okay ions having configuration 4fn exhibit similar color with the ions having configuration 4f 14 minus n this one is important okay student the alloys of these lanthanides alloy of lanthanides with iron and some amount of sulfur is basically referred as mis metal this one is also important student with this the chapter d and f block d and f block comes to an end i thank you all for watching this lecture if you have any doubt feel free to ask your doubt ask your doubts if you have any difficulties students once again i thank you all